In this next video in our Getting Started series, we'll begin building our first model. Over the course of the series, we'll construct a simple cooling water circuit, complete with pumps, valves, and heat exchangers. In this first step, we'll look at the main distribution header which supplies cooling water to five sub-circuits. We'll begin by opening a new flow sheet and placing some system boundaries. For this model, we'll use a known flow node at the inlet to simula simulate the discharge from the pump and we'll use known pressure nodes to simulate the exit conditions at five locations. To place boundaries or any component, we simply select them from the component palette and drop them onto the flow sheet with a single click. Now the boundaries are in place, we can connect them with pipe elements. Simply select a pipe from the palette and start the run with a single click. Move the cursor to the pipe endpoint and click again to place the element. You can see that Fluid Flow 3 automatically places a component, in this case an open pipe, at the end of the run. As we continue to to connect pipes, Fluid Flow 3 will add the correct components to the model as appropriate. In this way, models can be built quickly and effectively without having to worry about placing T's and elbows on the flow sheet. Now that con connectivity is defined, we can define some of the inputs in our models. We do that from here in the Input tab. The fields in the Input tab are reflective of the type of components selected. So for this known flow, we can set properties relevant to the node. We can define the flow into the network and set it uh, at a design flow of 50 meters cubed per hour and a temperature of 25 degrees. We can also select the fluid from our extensive database that you can see here and use the search window to help us navigate it. Next, let's look at the pipes. I'm going to multi-select all the pipes in the main header by holding the shift key and clicking on each component. Then we can set the common properties for all the selected components from the input tab. Let's set the length of each pipe to 30 meters. I'll not worry about pipe size just now because we'll look at that in more detail later. Here we can also specify the friction loss model. And we can use either Moody or Hayes and Williams or you can directly enter the Darcy friction factor. You can also select the surface roughness from our database or again enter your value directly. Now let's set the length of each leg to 15 meters. We can also show some properties in the flow sheet. So let's select the pressure boundaries and display the flow, re flow result on the flow sheet. This will allow us to quickly see the flow distribution through the network. We can display the results top, bottom, left or right of the component. Now let's look at the directional components. Directional components are de denoted by a colored dot, usually red, and signifies that a flow direction needs to be specified before calculation. The T-junction in this model are examples, and the description can usually be found from the input tab like this one for converging or diverging T's. We can set the location of the dot by selecting the component and clicking on the three dot button to cycle through the pipes. We can also look at the different loss models we can use for T's and select the preferred option. Finally, before we calculate, let's just save our model. We can do that by clicking on the Save As button and navigating to our preferred save location. Give the model a name and click Save. Now we can press Calculate. And we get a notification at the bottom of the screen telling us the calculation is complete. We can see the flow directional arrows are now in place and the results are visible on the flow sheet. We can also see some red markers which indicate a warning or error of some kind. We'll look at the results and messages in the next video, interrogating your results.